As I loaded into the seed, I noticed that this time, unlike my other adventures, I wasn't given a torch quickly to explore. I was given absolutely nothing. I wasn't sure what to expect. I mean, the only thing that was truly right about the seed was that we actually spawned right next to the ocean. This was a good sign, considering the bloop is a massive behemoth of a creature. Measuring to be 200 foot wide and 150 foot deep, we were looking for an incredible behemoth of an animal. Now, of course, it goes without saying that this is a creature that is incredibly hard to find, and if we were going to find him, we would have to somehow navigate the deep trenches of Minecraft. Now, of course, this is something that isn't easy to do. So what I wanted to do, considering I spawned in a sand biome, was go to a biome in which there were just trees. Now, of course, the only way I knew of that was to go over there. Now, of course, my render distance was set to equivocally short, simply because I needed that extra space in my Minecraft. For some reason, it's been quite laggy, but nonetheless, I still enjoyed it. But that's when something crazy happened. As I was moving over to the alleged biome, something started spawning in front of me and that's when i noticed a crazy statue that's right ladies and gentlemen you see it before your very own eyes this was the statue of the bloop you can all see there was this massive structure and i quickly went to my settings to open up the render distance so that i could see more of this at first i wasn't sure it was and then i remembered we were on the bloop seed so it only made sense for this to be a one-of-one -one replica and somehow statue of this incredible creature now first it was quite terrifying i mean if you look at the sheer size of this it's absolutely incredible it measures to be around 100 blocks tall and around 50 blocks wide a very very hard build in minecraft and what's even crazier is that all the space underneath it was specifically carved out and it had around three signs nearby explaining just exactly what we were looking at now, if you don't know what the bloop would look like if it were real in Minecraft, that's the exact size. And you can imagine being swallowed by a creature that large. That would be truly, truly terrifying. So I wanted to know exactly more about the structure. It's things such as who built it, how long it took, and exactly if it was, for our example, maybe it was the actual structure from the bloop's head. Maybe they'd somehow managed to capture it and place it there so of course i went over and i checked it out it said this seed is dedicated to the bloop the large creature which has not been seen in a while but we have made this statue to remember him so unfortunately it looks like my first initial observations i was completely wrong i thought this potentially a true extraction of the creature from the water but nonetheless it didn't make it any less awesome because i mean this structure put up would have taken hours and hours to build now it said use jetpacks to view this structure so of course and naturally i placed the jetpack on my back i loaded the fuel in my reserves and then of course i applied the night vision goggles and wow it was a spectacular sight the jetpack allowed me to fly up else i was otherwise unable to but looking back on the creature as i zoomed out it truly showed you the absolute scale of this unit of a creature it didn't have the eyes per se although the eyes would have been located on the right side of the head but nonetheless it was truly terrifying to see the scale in which a creature in minecraft existed so of course i wanted to truly find the real deal where was the bloop the real creature where was he so of course now my goal was to explore more on the seed so i did exactly that i took the jetpack with me because i thought it may come in handy and handy it just did so as i was flying through the center of the creature and it truly was wide i noticed that there was something across the river and it wasn't exactly something crazy but it was something that was going to give me more information about the creature that i so desperately wanted to i also realized that jetpack flying wasn't exactly the fastest way to travel so i quickly took the jetpack off so i started to travel and as quickly as i traveled i realized what exactly this world was this world just wasn't a random bloop seed there was more going on and i decided that i would travel to the nearest structure nearby now, as I ran and jumped over these crazy structures, I realized that there was a village nearby. But this village was quite strange. You see, it had portions of it that were actually sectioned iron blocks. Now, this is strange for two reasons. Number one, villagers don't really spawn in these kinds of locations. And number two, you never see iron blocks around these villages, meaning that this village was somehow fortified for a reason that I didn't understand. 
There was also a scientist nearby on the edge of the water, perhaps looking at something strange. I wasn't exactly sure what it was, so of course, naturally, I wanted to go and talk to him. Upon entering the village, I saw a first sign that actually made sense. It said research base. So it clearly showed me that what we were at was some sort of research base and not in fact some crazy reinforced village. But of course, there were actually some crazy creatures hidden amongst this village. Maybe they were inhabitants, maybe it was overrun, but it just goes to show that in this world of the bloop, there were clearly some new friends to play with. There was also a chest in which unfortunately there was nothing maybe it had been abandoned by the research team or maybe there was just nothing in general but nonetheless i wanted to explore the village before i got closer to asking the scientist exactly what was going on at first it was hard to find out exactly what was going on but i realized that there was a villager acting very strange inside one of the research stations so i went inside but to my surprise there was nothing there I also wanted to continue looking around, seeking if there was any more information because of course a bloop is a crazy creature and just that I managed to find this villager here. He managed to give me a decent amount of information. When I asked him what was going on, he said, have you heard anything? And I was a bit confused, but then I remembered that the bloop was a creature that actually created huge sounds. You see, this strange huge mouth that you see actually created the noise and which why we call the creature the bloop. He also said, that this creature is truly strange and if you do hear anything you should evacuate immediately so the sign also stated have you heard this creature and i'm guessing that hearing this creature would be much more likely than seeing it so that was my next best bet to see if i could possibly hear what this creature was up to so i continually looked around because i wanted to see if there was anything nearby i flew to the top of this village because it seemed to be in sort of an extractive place but i didn't really think that there was anything inside of it and of course i was right exploring the village wasn't exactly a waste of time but there wasn't as much information as i expected to be in this nearby place but nonetheless that didn't stop me persisting what i did do is i did actually manage to speak to the scientists i wanted to see exactly what they had to offer when I spoke to the scientist, he greeted me with a warm welcome and then explained that let me know if you see anything in the water, which meant that these scientists were clearly exploring the underground world. Now, one thing that was lucky about me is that I actually had these night vision goggles. As you could see, when I equipped them versus when they weren't equipped, things were much easier to see, especially underground, considering that there were no light sources underground. So the scientist said at night, big creatures come out. And that was truly scary because I was too close to the water and I remember the last time I explored a water source at night. It was truly terrifying, especially in a secret base in which all the creatures were quite dangerous. I was truly hesitant about what creatures I might find because the creatures that exist in this crazy world are truly dangerous. And of course, the scientists weren't that equipped to face any of the dangers. I also noticed that there was another scientist nearby and I wanted to speak to him too. He stated that there he that he was a marine biologist. He said that we are working on finding Bloop, okay? He's quite an evasive creature and that have we seen the statue? Now, of course, I'd seen the statue which commemorates Blue, but it was quite scary knowing that this creature was just out there and probably eating everything and anything that it may come across as path. And one of the truly terrifying things was that there were these crazy water creatures that were truly dangerous. And as I walked into the water to explore and look for Bloop, that was something that was going to be more and more evident. And luckily I had my jetpack to save me because every time I went into the water, there were creatures very much trying to harm me. The first creature I came across was a sort of turtle looking hybrid. It didn't seem too dangerous at first, but that's until I got too close and I struck it. It then decided to wander off into the night and I think it was truly triggered or dangerous. There were also some crazy birds around. There were too many creatures for my comfort and it was quite the scariest thing as I was being picked up and taken away by a bird in this blue dimension. I wasn't exactly sure what was going to be going on, but I just knew I had to get out of there quick. Depths of the water, I was quite unsure what I might find. I was hell bent on finding blue, but I realized that my jetpack wasn't going to work underwater and quickly I succumbed to crazy creatures at the depths of the trench. It was unfortunate, but this was something that was going to happen, especially if I was trying to find 
Minecraft's most dangerous creature. When I spawned back, it was pretty scary. There were mobs everywhere and the bloop statue seemed to come alive. I wasn't exactly sure if the bloop was out now, but I had no sure way of finding it. I was in a very dangerous position. I realized that the bloop seed was one that was truly scary. Yes, there was a crazy structure. Yes, it had spawned in many of its friends and many of its crazy sharks, but I was determined that I would never potentially come back to this seed without much more resources and much more time because 